Greetings and welcome. My name is Narisa Rashid, and I'm the host of today's ASQLean Enterprise Division webinar. We hold these webinars once each month, and they are free to all our members. Our webinars are recorded, so previous webinars are available on the ASQLean Enterprise Division YouTube channel. Our topic for today, January 21st, 20, for Lean webinar is Understanding Toyota Kata, and the presenter is Leanne Schielmeyer. Leanne specializes in implementing continuous improvement and risk mitigation strategies that help client increase efficiency, improve quality and service, and increase profits. A frequent speaker and coach on process improvement topics, she's a certified lean practitioner and Six Sigma black belt with more than 20 years of experience across a range of industries, including healthcare, finance, and manufacturing. Leanne is the founder and presenter of Park Avenue Solutions, a process improvement consulting firm that works to empower excellence in businesses and teams. A longtime advocate for manufacturing and STEM education, Leanne serves on the advisory board for Purdue Polytechnic and is sponsoring member of Women's and High Tech and the Wabash Valley Lean Network. Leanne currently serves as a regional director for ASQ over the mountain region. Leanne is married with and has two beagles. She recently moved to Arizona, is a foodie, avid golfer, car enthusiast, Reds baseball fan, and a loyal Purdue boil maker. The topic for the month of 20, February 2020 is to be determined, and the presenter is Elan, Alan, sorry, Alan Irma. Everyone would be on mute, but we are free to post questions to the presenter, Leanne, as you think of them. Leanne has reserved about 10 minutes at the end to answer your questions, which we will take one at a time. Here's Leanne Schilmeyer. Thank you, Nariza, for the introduction. And thank you for um, tuning in today for the webinar. Um, we're experimenting with a, a different time, and hopefully this works better for um, more people. So as I was developing um, this presentation, um, you know, looking up what understanding is and, you know, because I'm familiar with what kata is. And so, you know, I went to the reliable dictionary to look up um, what understanding is all about. And one of the interesting things that I came across was um, one of the um, third elements of it, where it's talking about the power to make experience intelligible by applying concepts and categories, which as um, a Kata practitioner and lean practitioner, um, it's all about showing people how to do it. And obviously in a webinar, we're unable to do like a workshop, but um, hopefully we'll see you at one of the conferences and you guys can participate in one of the workshops. So also, as we I went through this, um, like I said, I already knew what kata was, and that's what I want to share with you guys. Of kata is a way of doing, and so in reference to practicing a pattern, that when we practice that pattern, it becomes a habit. And so when we say improvement kata, what we're saying is it's a way of improving. So for this presentation, understanding and kata, we've combined those. And today, by the end of the webinar, you'll understand where Toyota kata comes from with its lean roots. And we're gonna go through the four steps of the improvement kata and the five steps of coaching kata and hopefully you can relate that to your current continuous improvement approach. I'm going to disclaimer this whole understanding of kata because as humans, we, we kind of have our limitations. Human mind can only hold five things. And that's something that um, the operation research pioneer um, Russ Akoff had um, stated years ago, since there's been a lot of research on this. And so we're going to go through some of the elements of, you know, our focus is understanding. But you you kind of got to go through the different elements to kind of truly get that understanding. Because with data, you know, we're looking at facts. 
And like I mentioned, there's, there's four steps to the improvement kata. Um, just as a hint, there's four steps to plan, do, check, act. These are things that we can remember. Um, information, um, we're, we're processing some of that data. The four steps of the improvement kata are set the direction, establish current condition, determine your next target condition, and your plan, do, check, act towards that target. And so in summary, kata is doing a daily plan, do, check, act. And so part of the knowledge of figuring out how to truly use kata, um, understanding the why and how, and that's gonna help you um, build upon your continuous improvement programs. So to, to start off on where the roots of kata come from, um, kata is a methodology and it's really taking us beyond lean. And many of us are familiar with this book. Um, this is the Learning to See book, which um, I believe just celebrated its 20th anniversary um, last year. And in here, uh, Mike Rother had coined the term value stream mapping. Uh, for Mike Rother's second book was Toyota Kata. So just to kind of connect um, where we're at of where Toyota Kata is coming from, um, the same author for the books. So how did Toyota Kata come about? Well, Mike Rother and the same group that visited Toyota 25 plus years went back to see why is Toyota still dominating automotive markets? Sure, they saw the same lean tools being used, you know, the 5S, the TPM, all the visual stuff that, that we've all come to love and know. Um, but one of the things that they, they observed this time was the interactions of people, specifically managers on how they were coaching and working with their employees. So Pata is not a tool, it's a methodology. So as adults, we have to, um, uh, Um, sorry. Um, so, like I said, the, there was a pattern observed. And as they were watching this pattern, um, they actually coined the term kata, improvement kata for this. And it's walking through a pattern that we can follow. And that pattern is getting your direction or challenge, um, grasping your current condition establishing your target condition, and then continually experimenting until you get to that. So how are we improving today? Well, lots of times we're doing methods of brainstorming, um, we have um, various projects that go unfinished. Maybe we've done Kaizen events and we end up with lists that never seem to get finished. And so those are kind of the methodologies that we've used to do continuous improvement. And yes, we've had um, successes, but I'm pretty sure we can do better. How do we change? We, we probably definitely need to change, but how do we do that? Well, here, here's what we can talk about as um, a, a little bit of understanding of how the brain works. Our brains are super smart. So smart that they can extrapolate and fill in the blanks before we realized what happened. We'll go through this quick example. What, what do you see? 
with this covered up. Obviously, it was not what you thought it was going to be. But here's the thing is even if I cover it back up, your brain is already jumping to the conclusions and seeing that. So it, that's how fast your brain, even though you know that's not what it says, your brain has already put it in your mind of this is what is happening. And so you would be wrong every time, even though you know the answer. So the, there was a um, really good TED talk that I recommend. Um, Google the TED talk. Um, it's Tom Wujak. Um, he goes through what's called the marshmallow challenge. Um, I'm not sure if you are familiar with the marshmallow challenge. Um, I believe we did this with ASQ leadership um, about five or six years ago. And the task is building a tower out of spaghetti with a marshmallow on top. You have spaghetti, string, tape, and the marshmallow. And the team that can put the marshmallow the highest on their tower, they actually will win. So one of the experiments that was conducted was with MBA students and kindergartners. Who do you think built the highest tower? Well, what happens is with MBAs, you know, we, we know everything. And really um, what happens is as adults, we start to do that whole forming, norming, storming. We're trying to figure out who the leader is and whose roles and responsibilities. And by the time we realize what's going on, they've announced that time is up and we probably haven't got very far or very high with our tower with the marshmallow on top. However, kindergartners, they just get in there and do it. They try, try and try. And they end up having the tallest tower with the marshmallow on top because they continue to try and fail. And what they're doing is they're learning what works and what doesn't work. Um, another way to look at this that we're familiar with, it's a plan, do, check, act. And that's exactly what kindergartners are doing is in essence is doing the plan, do, check, act. And what this is called is scientific thinking. And this is putting together, getting us back to trying and failing because we want to learn. So how do we acquire such a way of thinking? We've kind of lost it, but we can get it back. So let's try an experiment. Go ahead and cross your arms. I'll trust that everybody's doing this. Cross your arms like you normally would. Now uncross them and recross them the other way. How does that feel? Probably awkward, slow, unnatural. What has happened is our body has gotten so accustomed to this way of, of doing, this way of crossing our arms, that we just automatically do it. And we've probably done the same way every time for the decades. And so 
our challenge right now is how can we change? And really it comes down to changing our mindset so that as we're doing something new, we're embracing it because if we're changing our behavior, we're actually learning. Are we born with it? But it is a learned behavior. So like I said, we lost it somewhere along the line. We need to get back to that scientific way of thinking. And Kata puts this together in a really good way. We're going to have the scientific thinking pattern and then a technique of deliberately practicing. And we've all experienced this as whenever we've learned something new, such as a sport or maybe a musical instrument or dancing of, we learn little bits and pieces at a time and we perfect that until we move to the next step. What Mike Rother uh, developed was what he termed starter kata. So he has actually set this up as a pattern that we can follow so that we can now experience this habit of improvement. Going back to what we talked about of kata, a way of doing, so it's um, understanding the direction and grasping our current condition, establishing that target condition, and we're going to experiment towards that target condition. And we want to continue to practice that until we get really good at it. So what, what is kata, this, this methodology called kata? Well, there's two parts of kata. There's the improvement kata that has the, the actual four step pattern that we're looking to emulate and practice. And then there's the coaching pattern, the coaching kata, which is the pattern um, that the coach follows that's teaching and observing the person performing the improvement kata. We all know that as we're learning something new, we need someone to guide us and observe us, to give us feedback. And um, Mike Rother came up with a methodology for doing that, and that's through the five questions of the coaching kata. So quickly, I'm going to go through the, the four steps of kata. We have the understanding our direction or challenge, grasping the current condition, and establishing our, our target condition, and experimenting towards that target condition. And one of the ways I like to um, walk through this is putting it in a different kind of um, scenario. Um, I know we have the, the Super Bowl coming up soon, um, if we look at it from a football point of view, I'm pretty sure some of these teams have had a, a challenge that um, they want to, or a vision that they eventually want to be in the Super Bowl, and two teams have now made that. Um, but as they're looking at what they need to do to get to the Super Bowl, they had to win some games. And so understanding what your direction or challenge is, you need to win a game. But last week, they had to look at what their current condition was. They're on a certain yard line and they weren't going for the touchdown immediately. They needed to establish a target condition and that target condition is a first down. And if you look at experimenting towards that condition, they're doing a, a four downs they get four chances to try and get 10 yards. And so that's the analogy that aligns with this, what we're doing of where we wanna take this. Of we know our direction, we know what our current condition is, we know where we're wanting to get to, 
And then we're going to keep repeating and trying different things to get advanced down the, the field. Because really, getting from point A to point B, we only know what we know right now. It's like when you enter a, a dark room with a flashlight, you only can see what's in front of you and what that light hits. And as we take a step forward or three steps forward, we see more of what is there. So as we do our plan, do, check, act, we understand a little bit more of where we're at. And now we can make a decision to, to try and get to the next point. All right, so understanding the direction and challenge. So this is where um, your value stream maps would come in handy of tying this in. Um, you would already have what your vision and objectives that were probably set out by uh, your company. And so just to show how um, your value stream map ties into this, um, I'm going to show where the learning C book is out of this. So that's what your challenge, you're, you're going towards that future state, future value stream map. You need to understand your current conditions and that's where you're gathering data. You're gathering any of the facts that you need in order to um, truly understand where you're at. Um, this is a great opportunity to um, go and see your process at as, as it is currently running. And when we're doing um, process mapping at this, we're just doing a high level um, where we only have a few three to five boxes. That way we understand the process flow, but we're not looking at the details at this time. Um, gather any of the, the data that's already existing and because we want to be able to track as we make our changes. And what we would do is we would set up uh, a form where we're looking at our different types of metrics that we have of the outcome performance ones, um, our plan cycle times, you know, how we're, the, the diagram's gonna show how we are operating and may have some things such as capacity, number of operators, um, any kind of attributes and characteristics that we want to mention that might be unique to this specific process that we're looking at. So once we know our current condition, we want to set our target condition. And what I have found that we typically set a two week out target. Um, I know there's other people um, will set a longer time. Um, I have found that two weeks, which was um, recommended by Mike Rother, um, has worked really well. And what the two, week is, two weeks is, is we're going to become what we're set out to do in two weeks. So we're biting this target, this challenge off in two week increments. And we wanna take a look at, you know, what is our challenge? And we wanna be able to agree upon that we're going to achieve these goals by a certain date. And we'll have the defined metrics that we're using. And we'll also um, create an obstacles parking lot. And what is meant by obstacles parking lot, if we knew how to get to where we wanna be, we would already do it. There must be something that's keeping us from getting there. It might be a defensive line or it might be some kind of training at your company or, or shifts or different things that, that could be impacting why you're unable to achieve that improvement today. So, it goes back to, we only know what we know, and we want to establish a target that makes us a little bit uncomfortable. We wanna set something out so that it forces us 
to learn. Um, and like I said, about the obstacles, what's keeping us from being there now? Um, we only want to focus on one obstacle at a time and we would do our um, plan, do, check, act towards our target condition. And we already know that won't be a straight line because once we learn new information, it's going to change our next step. And that's where step four, where we experiment toward the target condition, or like I keep using the word plan, do, check, act, or plan, do, study, act for people that want to um, be a purist of what Deming's um, usage of it. And so it's walking us through the scientific learning cycle of the plan, do, check, act. Um, as we walk through that, we're experimenting towards the target condition. And like I said, we are learning as we go through and set out and do a test on our hypothesis. What we are trying to do in this experimental stage is we're looking to confirm or debunk your hypothesis on how you can improve your process. I'm sure many of you guys remember the TV show Mythbusters, and they created a whole series with their show of conducting different experiments. And those experiments were based on hypothesis that we knew to be true. There were lots of theories that we had about science and engineering, but yet they still tested it. And so um, they would conduct experiments and sometimes we would confirm what we know to be true, but sometimes they would debunk it. But that's scientific thinking. And so what, what we're doing is we're predicting something before it happens and we're writing it down. And that's our hypothesis. But then once we conduct that experiment, we record what actually happened because sometimes it's not what we expected. Regardless, we are still learning something. We're either learning that our information was correct or we learned that it was not correct. And we now can create another test based on the last one and build upon the knowledge we just learned. All right, so I'm getting a couple of questions. Um, so on the, um, real quick, I'll, I'll do this as we're in here. Um, there were some questions on the parking lot. Or, um, so it's, it's not a parking lot, it's a, um, an obstacle. It's, it's what is focused what, what we are focusing on that is preventing us from achieving our target. Um, obviously, we're, we will be focused on one specific process. Um, and if there is a parking lot, that would be something that ends up being outside of our scope that maybe we uncover something, um, which that, that could happen. But the obstacles are current things that are preventing us from achieving our target. So it will be specific to the process that we are looking at. Um, and the second question I have is about how does Kata compare or not to Agile? So this is very similar um, with Agile. 
I, I believe the retrospective can actually be replaced um, with this kind of methodology because you're going through of what, what worked and what didn't and creating that comprehensive list. So um, I've actually taught people of how to replace certain parts of Agile um, with using Kata methodology um, because it's you're you're going through cycles and this is really good for people who it, it's going to force them to try different things and so really there's different parts of Agile development that this works really well with. All right, so the, the second element of the Toyota Kata is the coaching Kata. And it's made up of five questions. And what this is doing is this is helping teach the person that is walking through the improvement Kata. And there's a script for that that Mike Rother developed and what that does is it walks you through setting up your hypothesis or your step or your test of what you're wanting to do. The five questions go through what is your target condition? What's your actual condition right now? What did you plan on for your last step? You know, because remember, we're wanting to build upon that last step. And so the coach is asking you each time you do a cycle, you know, what happened? What did you expect to happen? But what actually happened? And what did you learn? And so the coach is helping you focus and then having you look at what obstacle are you currently working on that's keeping you from that target condition because you're just focused on one at a time. And so um, as you go through the, the plan, do, check, act, uh, filling out the, the cycles, you know, what, once you've talked about what happened at the last step, what is your next step? And when can we go and see what happens when you learn from that step? And typically, um, we do daily katas with our clients um, when we set this up. And so typically, what would happen is, when can we go and see this? Uh, it would occur the next day about the same time because we have a daily cadence of doing these plan, do, check, act. And so it, it truly brings in an accountability. Um, one of the examples that I like to use is um, work instructions. So as an example, um, what, what is our step? Um, well, hold on. So work instructions, Everybody has work instructions that are not up to date. Um, that, that's a very common problem throughout the world, probably. Um, but we all talk about, oh, the work instructions aren't up to date. They're not very good. So my question always is, how bad are they? Like, bad like all of them are bad, like bad, we're gonna make bad parts. Like, give me some way to judge how bad they are. So that's usually the first step when they talk about their work instructions are not up to date. And we we know that that's something that we wanna focus on. And so what do we expect? Well, by the next day, you know, I'd like them to review, you know, a couple of them. That way we can see how bad they truly are. So the step would be, I'm going to review two of our work instructions. And what do they expect? They probably expect them to be really bad. So the next day when we go through this, what happened? And when they review them, 
they'll go through and, oh, well, yeah, half of it needs to be updated, but parts of it were good. And then the second work instruction we looked at was everything was good. So what did we learn? So now we know what bad means. And now we know that we do have a good document, but that we have one that needs work. So what's our next step? Is it reviewing others or is it making changes or plans to make changes or observations to make those changes to that work instruction? And that's kind of a powerful step. Um, typically what I find um, most companies do is we have our work instructions are bad. Can you get those updated by the end of the month? And when the end of the month comes, guess what? We didn't have time to update work instructions. Work instruction updates are never going to be a priority, but they're very important. Um, and so that, that's just a, a simple example of um, something that's common across different industries that um, I've experienced. Um, I have another question um, of someone asking, does your interpretation of Kata extend to having a master coach, master co coaches to coach first line coaches? Um, so that's, that's correct. There is a um, methodology of setting up what would be called an advanced um, team of when you are learning the Kata. And so, there would actually be the learner who is learning how to do the kata. And then you have your coach that is coaching that learner. And then you have a second coach who is coaching that first coach. And that is a critical step um, that is typical as you're developing an advanced um, team that leads going through the kata um, training the first time. Um, and and I, there's a diagram we're getting ready to get to. So to put this all together into what is called the starter kata, each learner has a storyboard that looks like this. So this is a board that um, you can put on wall or if you have a whiteboard um, where it has the, the different things we've talked about, the challenge, what process we're actually focused on, our current, current condition, our target condition, um, where a record of our plan do check act cycles, and then our, our obstacles parking lot. And here's kind of a, a, an example of what that would look like filled out in an essence of having your different measurements. So your current condition, put all the stats that you know that um, are good metrics that you can put up there. Um, you have your reducing the challenges, reduce scrap by 15%, um, and then you got your target condition. And then you have your records of plan, do, check, act. And then we have an obstacles parking lot. And here's where um, the diagram that shows um, how this works. Of you have the learner who is the person that is focused on practicing the improvement kata. And their coach is the one that's asking those five questions on a daily basis of what's your target condition? What's your actual condition? Uh, what was your last step? And so on. Um, and then the second coach is there observing and giving pointers. Um, you know, is the, is the coach being too stringent on the learner of challenging them to accomplish something that is really difficult? Um, is the coach, is the coach actually following the five question methodology? And so um, it is a good practice to have a second coach that is experienced with Kata already. Um, 
but it's one of those that um, as we train, uh, we develop over time the advanced team that has these three people that become the experts and we um, shift them around to do different, people will do each role over time. And so to, to go through um, the, the two big things, the two elements um, to remember is the improvement kata is four steps and that's your understanding your direction or challenge, grasping your current condition, establishing that target condition and continually uh, experimenting with your plan, do, check, act towards that target condition. Uh, the big thing that Mike Rother promoted and that I have found to be true is following that pattern when you first begin this is critical because it's developing that habit, which, you know, doing a habit for a while is going to change your behavior and, you know, be changing behavior, you know, ends up changing culture. Um, and then the second element is the coaching kata. And there's five questions to that. So um, my final thoughts on that is um, we do have um, a handout that has um, where you can go download all the things you need for the starter kata. Um, it has like a template for the storyboard. Um, it has um, the plan, do, check, act cycles um, templates and all the things you need to get going doing this. Um, so please check that out. And like I said, there's handouts you can download from this webinar. Um, and, or if you go to startercata.com, you can download it. Thank you. I got, um, we have some other questions that are coming in. Um, so one of the questions, have you had success using coaching kata on small scale with individual tasks instead of whole processes? So one of the things that I always say is I think everything's a process. Um, in fact, um, one of the presentations that I do is um, based upon my golf game. Um, where I've actually used kata to improve my golf game. Um, really, if, if it's a specific task, it's looking at that task. If you're performing the task, it's now become a process. And if you looked at it from that aspect, you could use kata for that because it's forcing you to think of ways to do something better. Um, I think it's human nature that we are continually trying to improve. And once again, this is a pattern that you can follow. Like, I'm going to try this and this is what I expect. But when I actually try it, what happens? So if you have a task that you're trying to improve, I'm assuming based on this question, if you have a task that you're trying to get better at, you would try different methods of how you're performing that task. And you're gonna make sure you set up ways to measure that task, like the outcomes of that task while you're doing it or maybe the output. And so as you're going through that, you know, try different things and how does that impact the, the, the task? So um, hopefully that answered your question. So that's right, you could get small on that. How can I add this methodology to my Lean Six Sigma toolkit? Are there any courses or training you could recommend? So um, the, the Lean Six Sigma, so Six Sigma is going to be um, solving problems with statistics. 
Um, and I like to compare um, Kata to a Kaizen event. Um, Kaizen event is the event, it's a methodology that we, we all use to structure a way of um, getting a team together and making a significant improvement. With Kata, on the other hand, it's a methodology that we are performing on a daily basis. So we're making incremental improvements. And so the reason I like utilizing that is what I found with Six Sigma is lots of times when I come to companies, there's all these unfinished Six Sigma projects, or there's A3s with action items unfinished. And I think Kata is an excellent way to keep the ball rolling and keep improving and not having a bunch of checklists that are now irrelevant because we've learned something new and that's probably why those never get answered is because we've now moved on. And so those action item lists end up becoming stagnant because they're, we've now gained new information that we're gonna build upon and those old projects have nothing to do with our new um, knowledge and where we wanna to move towards. Um, there's training available. Um, we offer training. Um, go, go to our website, download the starter kata. I, I highly recommend people try this on their own um, just to, to try it first and read through it. Um, but we do offer training um, to walk you through and develop a um, advanced team. So once you guys learn how to do it, then you're able to share it across your company and um, build different kata boards. Um, one of the questions, um, when starting the kata journey, where do you find most organizations struggle? Um, I think the biggest thing is keeping that um, scheduled time and making it a priority that you meet on that daily basis. Um, there's always going to be challenges to that. Um, you know, we have different shifts, different shift changes. You know, I think people take vacations or maybe they're in training. And so one of the remedies for that is, um, you know, having designated backups, which if the learner is on vacation, that coach could then become the learner and, and just having a plan because it goes back to if you disrupt that habit, that pattern that you've been doing, you know, we kind of fall into that rut of, oh yeah, we'll, we'll do it next week. We'll do it next week. And then it kind of falls behind. So that's the big struggle that I've seen companies have. Um, question, have you done Kata about safety occupation? Um, you, you can do it on any, anything that you set out to do. Like I said, I've used it for golf. Um, I'm trying to think if we've come across safety. Um, I'm sure we've done some safety things um, that come up. And then um, another question, what are your thoughts on the variations of plan, do, check, act cycles, such as um, I'm not seeing the whole um, question. It was what are your thoughts on variations of the plan, do, check, act cycles, such as PDSA? I don't know what the rest of that question was. Um, the plan plan to study uh, adjust this. What are your th thoughts on variations of the PDCA, PDCA cycle, such as PDSA, plan to study adjust? Um, it's the same concept. Um, and like I said, I've had really good debates with people about that, of if it's PDCA or PDSA. 
So um, I, I don't, like I said, I think dimming um, used PDSA. So that would probably be the official answer. Um, someone asked, who is the second coach mentioned other than the coach? So that's right, there is a second coach and that coach is coaching the, the first coach and mentoring and observing um, the whole interaction with the coach and the learner. It's the first coach and the learner that are interacting. And, and so the second coach is gonna be someone that is knowledgeable of how the kata cycle should be performed. Yeah, and we have multiple requests for the presentation slides. Are we able to share this now or afterwards? Um, I, I don't have the slides um, that we're um, sharing, but um, I do have um, in the handouts a, a summary of the improvement kata steps um, and the five questions. And then um, if you go to um, our website, which it, the downloads have that, um, it actually has a comprehensive um, write-up of what kata is, and it actually has way more than what this, these slides have. Um, in fact, Mike Rother um, actually recommended our website. Um, he thinks it's a very good synopsis of, um, of his book. So um, it's, it's a way to, to get up to date on it by reading through the what is kata. And like I said, it's way more comprehensive than this, um, the slides. And how do we get credit for our use? Any idea? I, I don't know. I think, um, Hank will I think we have a list of all the attendees and um, I, I think it'll be, I, I'm not sure if they're issued or how they do that. Uh, it will it will be communicated through Hank uh, to all the attendees. So we'll get back to you. Um, I have one more question, uh, Liani. I have come across a new book called "Seeing to Understand" that accelerates your learning curve on Kata, and it seems to be a very nice starting point for somebody. Have you had experience with this book, or any other ones you might suggest? Um, I have not um, seen that book. Um, but the, the the two books that I recommend, which I'm sorry I didn't put these on here. So the original book, the Toyota Kata book um, that I had at the beginning, um, it's it's kind of the theory and where it comes from. But then um, there's a newer newer books that were released um, last year. One of them is the Toyota Kata Practice Guide. And the other book is the Toyota Kata Culture. Um, I believe we have both of those listed on our website as um, references, recommendations. And, and like I said, it's a whole book on how to do the starter kata. Um, and so, yeah, it's like I said, the, if you go and look at our website, we have the download. It has summary of all the um, forms of how to do the starter kata if you are not interested in reading all the books. I have a response from uh, ASQ members here. Uh, an automatic email will be sent out in 24 hours, and that is how our use are distributed. So, uh, I think, Leanne, we have covered almost most of the questions in here. If we have missed any, please feel free to shoot, shoot us an email. Uh, I would like to thank Leanne for taking her time to share with us some very important and interesting informations that can be applied to any business organization and share their real-time application and experience. As I said earlier, Leanne's presentation is now recorded and will be posted on ASQ Lean Enterprise YouTube channel later this week. I want to remind you that February 2020 topic is to be determined and Alan Irma is the presenter. Thanks to everyone for participating in today's webinar. Have a great day.
Lian, you, are, you have been well appreciated and our audience is very thankful to you for your time. All right, thank you everyone. Thanks.